1985, I went to Rome, Italy to direct Klaus Kinski in a movie I wrote. Klaus Kinski, Nosferatu the Vampire, Fitzcarraldo, Gary the Wrath of God, all those great Herzog movies. I was going to get to direct Kinski. There is no direct on the word, not for me, who can say do it. He hated directors, hated them. I called his agent, Walter Conner. Walter, I'd like to go up to San Francisco and meet Mr. Kinski. Oh, he said. Well, have you read this month's issue of Playboy magazine? There's an interview with Mr. Kinski. Perhaps you should read that. So I read the Kinski interview in Playboy magazine. I was in big trouble. This is what, this is what uh, is, makes me allergic to directors. You know, like telling me how to die. I said, well, you, you were, were you already dead? Okay, then get that first and come back and tell me if you know it, you know? It's a shit. I had no idea how much trouble I was in. After the first three days of shooting, Mr. Kinski had started six cyst fights with my crew. I'm here, not here. That's easy. But I'm here. If I'm here, they have my shoulder in. That's for sure. After the first three days of shooting, we were two days behind schedule. After the first three days of shooting, the Italian producer and I decided we had to replace Mr. Kinski. It wasn't working out. It was all okay before. I don't know what the point is. They just said she didn't turn around. And then they missed the whole thing up, you know? It was okay. We called the American producer and broke the news. Mr. Kinski has to go. Bummer, he said. An hour later, the American producer called back. The distribution company, which was paying for our film, insisted we keep Mr. Kinski. His name had marquee value. So I resigned myself to a runaway production with Mr. Kinski. On the fourth day of shooting, I showed up on the set. The Italian producer had a pleasant smile on his face. He explained he had a solution to our problem with Mr. Kinski. He was going to kill him for the insurance money. And he wasn't kidding. I raced to the nearest phone. I called the American producer. He's going to kill Kinski for the insurance money. And he's serious. Bummer, he said. Bummer? Mr. Kinski was an awful man, but he didn't deserve to die for it. Fortunately, cooler heads prevailed. We were not going to kill Mr. Kinski for the insurance money. We were going to bite the bullet. In a funny sort of way, I felt I had saved Mr. Kinski's life, and he owed me. Right? <laughs> right. On the fifth day, Walter Conner found out I had recommended firing Mr. Kinski, and so informed his client. On the fifth day, Mr. Kinski declared war on me. I know when I was wrong, all right. I knew it was right. He began with a full frontal assault. We were halfway through the day. The AD called for sound, speed, camera, rolling, and he turned to me and I said, and action. And there was this scream. I look over and see Mr. Kinski with his head between his hands, screaming, action, action, action. I've made over 200 movies and directors are always saying action. And I looked at Kinski and he pointed his finger at me. There's Moses on the mount. There's Moses in that picture. There's Moses' finger. He pointed it at me and he said, don't say action. Action. <laughs> All right, Klaus, what would you like me to say? I don't care. Just don't say action. How about if I just say, Klaus? So it went like this. Roll sound, speed, roll camera, rolling, and Klaus. And the scene began. So this silly routine lasts for about a day and a half. And then out of the blue, after I've started the scene with the word Klaus, there's this scream. I look over and there's Klaus with his head between his hands, looking up, screaming, Klaus, 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 all my life, directors have called Klaus. A lot of people who say, I, I respect the director, I listen to him. What? To what? To what? What, do you want to teach me to breathe or what? I'm not blind, I don't need a dog to cross the street. What the fuck does all this mean? I remembered from the Playboy interview with Mr. Kinski that he was famous for getting rid of directors. After a while, it just wasn't worth it. They'd walk. I was determined this wasn't going to happen to me. This was my film. 
I would outlast him. So I say to Mr. Kinski, if I don't say Klaus to start the scene, what would you suggest I say? And he says, say nothing. I'll start when I'm ready. The director is already very suspicious, you know what I mean? At this point, my crew begins whispering in my ear, one by one, three or four times a day, David, please kill Mr. Kinski. Please kill Mr. Kinski. Please kill Mr. Kinski. We were headed for the home stretch, and it looked like I was going to survive Mr. Kinski. But the little prick wasn't finished with me yet. Everything's going along fine. We're shooting the scene. It ends, and I say the only word left to me as the director. I say, cut. And there's this scream. I look over, and there he is with his head between his hands, looking up, screaming, cut, cut, cut. I've made over 200 movies, and directors are always saying cut. And he points that Moses finger at me, and he says, don't say cut. I always said, I don't need to be fucked in my ass by Pasolini or Visconti to appear on the screen, because I can't appear on the screen without being fucked in my ass. And if I want to be fucked in my ass, then it's me who decides. But I don't have to be fucked by a director on my ass to appear on the screen. You know what I mean? Okay, Klaus, what would you like me to say? And Klaus says, say nothing. I'll stop when I'm finished. My crew implores me, no longer whispering in my ear, but muttering out loud within earshot of the monster himself, please. Kill Mr. Kinski. But I wasn't going to kill Mr. Kinski, even if I wanted to. I couldn't even wish him dead. I needed the bastard to finish my movie. A few years later, I get this phone call. Mr. Kinski had died. And they quoted me in his obituary confirming that he had a reputation as being difficult with directors. At first, I felt awful. You die and your obituary should list your accomplishments. And here I was trashing the man. And then I remembered what a mean bastard he'd been to me. This was just karma biting him in the ass. This was my revenge. I came to see about the vacant apartment. It's been rented. Creep. But you know what I really wish? I wish his obituary had quoted me saying what a compelling actor he was, how great he was to watch. He really was great to watch. Klaus Kinski. I am the only free man on this train. The rest of you are cattle. 